be me, GM, be not me, Ranger, Wizard and Cleric. Players are in your typical RPG town, taking quests from the local Adventurers Guild. After killing some bandits, players return to the local tavern to find a deranged madman causing trouble. He's spouting nonsense about how the lady will give people anything they want, and how this lady can grant any wish, but only if they follow him out into the woods. Townspeople are understandably upset, and shoo the guy away, not wanting him to cause trouble. The party is split on what to do, with Ranger and Cleric wanting to ignore him, and Wizard wanting to follow him. My face when the party actually splits, with Wizard heading off to follow the guy into the forest at night, alone. Hours pass, Ranger and Cleric get restless, decide to head out and search for Wizard, find nothing. Question town folk, say madman is local lunatic, used to live in the area before going crazy. Next session, with no leads, Ranger and Cleric ask where madman lived, cabin in the woods.jpg. Party finds cabin abandoned, with no sign of struggle. Party searches deeper, and finds hidden door. Behind door is a single skeleton. Kill it quickly. Door leads to hidden basement full of occult stuff. Eventually find Diary of Madman. Describing how he summoned a succubus demon to save his wife from dying. Sold his soul in exchange for keeping his wife alive no matter what. Wife objected. And Madman locked her up to stop her from interfering. Madman eventually fell in love with succubus. An abandoned wife without food or water. Party realises they have just killed the skeletal form of wife. Sad times. PNG. Party also finds very heavy, very locked chest. Party wants to bring chest back to town. Needs wheelbarrow to even move it. On way back to town, gets ambushed by madman, wizard and civilian. Fight is easy, but madman teleports away when downed, laughing about how the lady will get them all. Wizard is healed and explains that he was mind controlled. Other civilian agrees. Neither have memory of who controlled them. Party pieces together, Succubus is kidnapping and mind controlling people is confirmed with high amount of missing people. Party brings chest to a local sage and gets it open. Inside, Party finds a contract written in Inferno. Sage offers to translate it, since none of the party can read Inferno. Party accepts, and stay with Sage while translating. Cleric remembers they never turned in bounty for bandits. Does that. While she is separated from the party, gets approached by a very pretty woman. Cleric gets seduced and lured into a private room wakes up in some weird kind of lair, facing the true form of the succubus. Succubus explains she is not evil. Cleric does not buy it. Succubus explains she does not kidnap anyone. All her victims are people that want what the succubus can give them, and are there willingly. Succubus is powerful, can grant many wishes. Succubus says she is only doing what she has to do, to not get hunted down by bigoted humans. Memory wipes anyone that leaves her, so she cannot be tracked down. My face when Cleric buys it. Succubus explains Contract is what keeps her in the material plane. If Contract is destroyed, she will die and be sent back to hell. Succubus gives Cleric fake translation of Contract and asks for her help. Succubus only needs to stay around for one more week. Then her preparations will be done and she will no longer be in any danger. Cut back to Sage. Cleric returns, acting strangely. Says she actually can understand Inferno and will translate Contract. Everyone is surprised, but goes along with it. Tells everyone translation will take time, and to go do other stuff while they await. Cleric is left alone with contract. Plants fake translation of contract, and steals real contract through the night. Morning comes, party cannot find Cleric. Start panicking. Cleric is off in the forest, and is given the real contract to the succubus, on the promise she will punish the madman for attacking the cleric's allies. Cleric returns to party. Party immediately suspicious and cast every spell they know to check if she's being mind controlled. Cleric is not being mind controlled. Party checks fake translation of contract. Tells them if succubus dies, all that are mind controlled also die. Moral dilemma. JPG. Party takes some downtime. It is at this point that Cleric tells Ranger of her meeting with the succubus. Ranger wants to tell everyone right away. Cleric convinces him to meet the succubus and talk to her privately to decide for himself. Cleric takes Ranger to the place where she gave the succubus the contract. Succubus appears and tells them she will only talk in her lair and she will only bring them there if they are asleep. They agree. They wake up in the lair with the succubus sitting in front of them. Succubus pulls the same story again 
Explains how Wizard joined her willingly. Explains how all her victims are perfectly willing. Explains how she just needs six more days to prepare and all of this trouble will be dealt with. They buy it. Ranger and Cleric returns to Wizard. Wizard is very suspicious and uses all spells in them to figure out if they are mind controlled. Neither is. Downtime continues. When wandering around town, Ranger encounters some of the succubus's servants, loading unmarked crates into a cellar. Ranger keeps his distance and moves on. Next session, Ranger player goes into a mental breakdown, has been having nightmares, insomnia and high anxiety because of game, is constantly worried about betrayal from succubus or cleric, is constantly worrying in case he made the right choice, is getting extremely paranoid in day to day life. Ranger player does not want to continue campaign. Cleric does not want to continue without Ranger. Campaign ends because of paranoia. The face when the succubus was preparing a ritual to mind control the entire town. The face when the succubus has been constantly lying about everything. The face when the players would have doomed the entire town to internal mind control by a demon by actively working against the adventurers trying to stop her. The face when no one in the party ever tried to insight check the succubus or each other. The face when... Every time anyone in the party was brought to the lair, it was an illusion. If they had interacted with anything or left the room, it would have been obvious. The face when I get criticised for turning the party against itself. I kind of feel like this was a gross overreaction in the end. Be me, GM. Running a level 10 Pathfinder one-shot. Me. Welcome to tonight's adventure. Entitled, A Succubus Riding on a Stegosaurus Crashes Through the Ceiling, Roll for Initiative. I wait a moment for them to stop laughing. Me. No, really. Roll for initiative. Players battle their way through the zany dungeons, which is a magic item production facility, and eventually come to a giant steel vault door. The lock is recessed almost a foot into the extremely thick door, so it's theoretically pickable, but can't be done with normal thieves' tools. Players try some things which don't work. The swashbuckler yells at the door to open, She's a little confused when I actually tell her to roll intimidate, but assume I'm just running with her joke. Players leave and eventually find a key with a foot-long shaft on it. Subtle. The oracle picks it up and his hands get chomped. Me. You take eight damage as the key handle bites you with razor-sharp teeth. Roll for initiative against the mimic key. They kill the key and it hardens via rigor mortis into a usable dead mimic key with a tongue hanging out of the handle. Players go back to the giant vault door. Me. You insert the mimic key into the mimic door. Ranger. Into what? Me. The keyhole opens around your hand and tries to bite your hand off, dealing 17 damage. Roll for initiative against the mimic door. I'm pretty sure the players actually didn't see it coming. Oracle's arm gets chomped again. They kill the door and it melts into goo. Inside the vault is an empty circular room with a single treasure chest in the middle of it. Players have never been more suspicious of anything in their entire lives than they are of this chest. They start casting divination spells, stabbing it, watching the ceiling very carefully, etc. Eventually they give up and open it. Chest opens normally, wasn't even locked. Inside is a single level 1 potion of cure light wounds, clearly labelled, and produced in the facility they are currently exploring. Weakest potion in the game, they're all level 10, lol. Swashbuckler says, all of that for this? Oracle says, well I got attacked twice so I might as well drink it. Me. As the potion touches your lips. Oracle. Oh no. Me. The mouth of the vial bites hard onto your lip, dealing 12 damage. Rolls. Four of which is also healed by the potion. Roll for initiative against the potion mimic. Later, the entire building filled up with acid and a wizard stuck in the body of a walrus Save them from a Tarrasque by piloting the building's jet thrusters and making a whole facility take off into the sky. Fun times. I'm sorry, boys, but see anyone that actually falls for a succubus is a fucking brainlet. Like, anyone familiar with succubuses knows that, well, what do they do? They're there to fill you, they're there to tempt you, they're there to, you know... <laughs> their whole purpose is to fill someone, you know what I mean? And, like, you know, steal their soul and all that. How did this happen? You know, it's more just like how than anything. But, you know, I thought it was interesting. I really enjoyed it. And like, you know, I've never really done many story times on like creatures and stuff. Bar maybe like Shoggy the Seldom Dog or 
I think that's about it, to be honest with you. So I, I want to do more ones about story time, like the creatures and stuff. I don't know. I think they're more fun. Like, you know, I enjoy them doing them, like, you know, so it's one of those ones. I like to think if I enjoy the story, then you guys will enjoy the story too, you know? But look, um, let us know what you thought down below. Uh, definitely do that. Remember to like and subscribe and all that other good stuff. Uh, check out the second channel and uh, I'll see you in the near future.